Hi class, um, I'm recording this video uh, to show you some tricks you can do in order to debug your program that makes use of forms, which is uh, the next homework assignment that we have to do. So I'm doing this a little bit ahead of time. Um, so by the time we get to forms, it would not be too difficult to understand what is going on in your scripts. All right, so right here we have a terminal because I like to work on my scripts using a dumb terminal. And also behind this is the actual homework assignment using forms. So the first thing we want to do is to take a look at a basic form. A form element is like this. It starts with this. It specifies whether it is using the method get or the method post. Now those two methods are fairly similar in terms of what they can do, uh, with post being slightly more flexible because you can also upload files. But for the most part, you know, in this kind of homework assignment, uh, they are very similar. The action part allows you to specify something other than the page itself. So in this case, because the action is empty, an empty string, it is going to reload exactly the same page, but with all the different parameters as specified by the inputs. And obviously this is the end of the form element, which is uh, no, no, not surprising at all. So the input fields are the only thing that is kind of interesting because in this case we have uh, each input has a particular type, and we have text boxes in these cases because they are of the type text. At the same time, each input also has a name. Uh, in this case, we have F name and also L name. And then whatever appears here is the caption for the uh, input field itself, which would display you know, on the screen. And in this case, it's not even a part of the input. You can see that it is outside of the input type. Um, so we'll go ahead and use this as an example. And I just want to illustrate to you, you know, how do you know the value of each and every single get variable when you're dealing with forms, because that might be helpful. All right, so I'm just gonna to have to copy and paste this code into my dumb terminal. So even though I could do that, um, the HTML um, formatting may interfere in the process. Um, but it's worthwhile because I'm lazy and I don't want, like to spend my time copying you know, by retyping stuff. So I'm going to do a copy here, go back to the dumb terminal, and go to the folder where I want to put this particular file. Now remember this time it does have to be in public HTML because I need to run this from a browser in order to trigger that code. So let's go ahead and make um, a new file. Uh, I'm going to call this test form one PHP. And I forgot that one little thing here that is important. So if you're a command line person, this is a neat little trick. Uh, you can use the cat program with a greater than sign, which is called a redirection symbol, so that you know, whatever you type is directly redirected into a file. And this will also destroy the file test form 1.php. If that file exists at this point, it will be erased and be replaced by the new content. When you press the enter key, it's, it looks like it's not doing anything. Um, it's actually waiting for you to type something. Um, but in this case, I'm not typing anything. I'm going to paste whatever I have selected earlier and then press the enter key. And to end this, you type control D to stop it. There we go. And it is always good to double check with Vim, make sure everything looks good, yep. But this is really only a part of an HTML document. So I'm gonna give it the bare minimum uh, container um, elements. So we have head and then we have body here and the body element and the HTML containing element. And now we have a really, really basic form. And if I want to, you know, I can just put some um, header here and just say this is a test. Okay, there we go. All right. So when this is all done, this is called testform1.php. So I go back to the web browser because I got uh, that my website loaded already here. So I just have to say testform1.php. And you can see how it loads this particular page. This is the text input element. This is the plain text that's after it. This is the other one. And here's my uh, submit query button. So you can do this all day long, you know, put something here, put something here, click the button, and it is as if nothing happens. 
Now, one thing that you might be able to see already is the URL has changed a little bit. And you can see how the URL is changed so that there's a question mark after the path to the script. And F name has a particular value. And it's kind of odd to have a little plus sign. The plus sign actually is representing a, sp a space in the value of that particular get variable. And you can also see how submit, a uh, form, excuse me, my form has, is now a parameter and it has a value of submit plus query. So that is the interesting part because that is how you can tell what triggered the execution or what triggered the reloading of this form. And in this case, it is the um, get variable called my form and the value that it has is submit plus query, which translates to submit space query. All right, that is kind of interesting, but this is kind of cumbersome, you know, because you have to hover over the URL to basically see what is uh, submitted. So the other way to do this is to go back here. And what we'll do is we're gonna make a loop here so that we can print every single last um, uh, get variable with the value. And to do this, uh, we have to look up, you know, how to use PHP so that we can extract the keys of an associative array, which is kind of like an array, except you use, instead of using numeric values inside the square bracket, you use strings, which is basically what uh, underscore get is. So we'll look up um, loop keys, there we go. I think that should find it. So for each is what we need to do. And once we get there, we look up key. There we go. So as it turns out, you know, for each has a particular format that will help us do this. So in other words, the array expression in this case can be a an associative array, uh, like underscore get. And then what we need to do is to specify um, these two items and what the for each loop is going to do is it will put the value of a key into the dollar key variable and put its value the, the value of corresponding to that particular key into dollar value in this case so by the time you get to the statement um, it would have dollar key corresponding to the name of the get variable and it would have dollar value corresponding to the value of that particular um, get variable. So this can be very handy. So let's go ahead and make use of this. So we have a for each open paren and the array that we are dealing with is underscore get oh, dollar underscore get. Um, and then we say as, oops, I need to put this inside the PHP code section. As we talk about in class, you know, I just call this your code section inside the script. So the entire file is considered a script, but inside the script, we have, you know, the other parts, which are just, you know, portions of an HTML document that will be uh, output as a document, you know, verbatim. And then this part here is, you know, what we call a code section of a PHP script file. All right. I could tell that you know, something was not right because the syntax highlighting was not uh, working the way it's supposed to. So instead of using key as the variable to store the key, I'm just going to call it K. And then the value is $V. There you go. And then we'll also use um, curly braces. Um, the way it does you know, all the uh, shifting because of the uh, open and close braces is automatic. So if I want to change the automatic indention to two, which is what I prefer, I can say AI equals two. AI is the abbreviation of auto indent to two. So now if I use that, oh, okay, it's still using the whole tabbed character. Okay, never mind, we'll fix this later. Um, so at this point I should have you know dollar K being the key and dollar V being the um, the value. So I can just you know, use a print statement to print out each key and each um, value. And I'm not sure whether this will work or not. So I would be, oh, this, 
yeah, I'm not sure whether this will work or not. So we'll go ahead and see if it works. So I'm going to say the key is, oops, is dollar $K. Okay, that should work because you know a simple variable expansion should work inside double quotes. Is dollar V. Oh, okay, yeah. I was just thinking that I might need to do uh, array indexing from get, but since the value is already in dollar V, there's no need to use array indexing at all. All right, that is cool. And then what we want to do is to put a uh, br into here. And then backslash and, you know, because this way, if I run it from the command line, which I won't, it will still look right. Now, the other thing that we also want to do is what if $V is empty? Because otherwise, this would just print, you know, is and then this emptiness, right? So it's pretty hard to see that. So I'm going to put um, back take quote, uh, back, backslash quotes around both the key and the value. So this way we know that the key and the value are double quoted. It is only the stuff that is inside the quotes that matters. All right, so this should be done. Let me go back to my script right here, and we'll give it a little run, right? So we'll say a um, bunch of gibberish here, more gibberish over here, and some query. There we go. It just took a while because the script, you know, took a while to run. But you can see how the key is F name, first word, the first name. And this is the content of the first name. It doesn't have all the plus symbols as we see in the URL because all the plus symbols are really um, replacing the space symbols because we cannot have spaces within a, a URL. And then uh, L name is another bunch of gibberish. But what uh, you should remember the most is the name of the form becomes its own get variable. And unless you do something to change it, um, the value is submit query. And if you go back to the script, we don't have anything to specify to uh, submit query. You cannot see anything here. All you can see is this is submit, and the name is my form, and this is where the my form is getting its name, getting the get variable name. But the value corresponding to the key is never really specified here. It is because of the type being a submit. And when you click that button, it will automatically populate this particular input field, which is of a type of submit, with the value of submit query. So that's one thing that you might want to uh, remember because you might want to double check to make sure that my form is in fact having the string of submit query because otherwise um, the triggering of this execution of the script may not be coming from clicking the submit query uh, button. And you might want to filter all those particular URLs out and just say that I'm not going to process this unless you know, it is because of the clicking of the button. All right, so this is it. This is all that I want to demonstrate um, because I just thought uh, this little section of code can really help you debug your program that makes use of um, forms because at least you can see in the um, PHP script when it executes in a browser what type of variables it is getting. Um, so I'm going to stop here. Um, there will be another tip variable that talks about you know how you can create a log file in case the script doesn't run entirely it only runs partially and you there's nothing to see on the in the browser can you still log something so that you can say oh okay i can see the script runs up to this point um but not beyond and from where it stops you can hopefully get some information of how to fix it all right so um i hope this is helpful to uh, doing your forms homework assignment and I will talk to you another time.